Hey guys, this is Tom Matthews, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. Stay tuned. All right, and welcome to the Station of Decapitation Without Your Head. I am Nasty Neal. This is Annabelle Yay. Lecter. <laughs> and that would make me terrible, Troy. Aw, and we, ha- we, have, we have a cheerleader here with us from Return of the Living Dead, and now producer of That's a Cut, The Legend of Don Calfa, Beverly Randolph. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and we should clap for her. She cheered for Yay. us. Yay! Oh, that was lovely. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. How are you guys? Great. Wonderful. That's a great good night. Yeah. Yay! Are you guys on the East Coast where it's freezing? Yes, we're, we're all on the yes. East Coast. It's all nine. Here. Very cold. Mm-hmm. Quite cold. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to, it might snow tonight, tomorrow morning. Ah. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. We're getting cold weather, but not quite as cold as you guys, and no snow. So. Yeah, it's like 75 or something, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it sounds like a little cooler today, a little cooler, but yeah, not uh, bad. Yeah. My parents are going to the beach next week, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, Nice going to be. Well, uh, we were talking off here about uh, conventions, and uh, something yeah. I didn't want to ask you about because I uh, used to, you know, uh, different people come and. Um, what is it about Return of the Living Dead that like so many different um, generations of fans, you know, uh, keep finding it and enjoying it? You know, I just I think that um, it's such a unique movie and it has such an interesting look to it that it just people. So you got to to the next generation. You got to see this movie. You got to see this new movie. It's really great, and they share it with their friends. And the the fans just keep cropping up. And then the conventions seem to grow with all of these people. They bring their kids, and sometimes there's grandparents involved. And it's, it's just the cutest thing. I just it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. It's always it's, we're always busy. <laughs> Isn't it amazing to see? Because I'm I know a lot of people that get involved in conventions. A lot of the actors and different persons. They don't know really what to expect at first from their fans. And no. it does seem to me like it's, it's the diversity of personalities and people that show up is, is really amazing. What do you think about the convention people, and how did you first go into it? Well, I, um, Bill Philpott was the first one to call me up and say, hey, you know, this is, oh, my gosh, probably 10 years ago, if not more. And uh, it was after the Egyptian screening, which I had no idea there was anything going on with Return of the Living Dead. And um, I was just amazed at that. So from there, I met Bill, and he said, hey, would you be interested in doing a, a convention? And I was like, what? He goes, yeah, people, you get paid money. And <laughs> Oh, hey. <laughs> so I did the first one, and I did it with Don and Linnea. And uh, it was it was so incredible. I thought that'd be the only one I ever did, and I was fascinated by it. And I was, um, I, I it was the most warming experience. And then I thought, okay, I'm done. That's the last one I, I'm going to do. It's the first one, the last one. I know that's it. And then another one came up, and I'm thinking, hmm, should I do it? But they get very addicting. It's the craziest thing because you love the people, and it, it's hard to turn away people telling you how great. You are, and they love you. <laughs> That's terrible. But it's true. It's like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's like being welcomed into a Thanksgiving dinner, and your whole family's there, and it's like, Beverly, yay, you know, party time. <laughs> how, do you, how do you turn that down, you know? It's just Who would love that? Mm-hmm. Who would really love to be loved? Yeah. It's a natural high. It, it true, I mean, we're exhausted at the end of it. But it is the biggest natural high you could possibly be on. It's just incredible. Yeah, I hope to experience that someday. People in uh, liking to see me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now you guys always have such like a great chemistry together. Did you keep in contact, or uh, had you not kept in contact until the conventions? Well, it, it kind of fell away for a while, and then we saw each other at the Egyptian, and, you know, um, I've seen Stan be with the casting director since then, because she knows uh, my husband and my mother a little bit, and um, different people, they, and we also live close to each other, so we run into each other a little bit, and then the conventions happened, and we all kind of got back together um, more. It's like Don Kalf and I were talking all the time about recipes, and he'd call like once a week, and... Um, you know, Jewel and Linnea, she, even though she's in Florida, we'd be tech, not texting because she was in text, but we'd be calling and reading each other messages or, you know, emailing each other is mostly what we do. And, um, yeah, it just, it's now it's, you know, more than it was, of course. Mm-hmm. But 
I just feel really close to them. It's like if, if I need something, I'd call Alan and go, hey, Alan. He goes, oh, yeah, Beverly, okay, you know. So it's not like um, uh, anything weird. It's like everyone's close. And with, along with uh, uh, William Stout, you know, my husband worked with him when uh, they were first starting out in the film business. And um, he's also one that we keep in touch with and keep close with. So it's really nice. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that uh, the cast, because the movie, there's a part of the cast that were, you know, uh, very young at the time, and then there were the, the veteran actors, and that all, all of you guys, uh, you know, are, are, are friendly together from different generations. Yeah. Well, you, I'm sorry? You know, because you, you, you guys would be from different generations, and it's uh, it's it's cool uh-huh. that you guys would all be uh, friendly together. Yeah, but we're all catching up, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, um... Uh... Well, yeah, it's funny, but you know what, James can you can't not but love him, and he mm-hmm. just, he's so warm and fuzzy, he just grabs you and hugs you, and everything's wonderful, and you know, we go to dinner with him a lot, and uh, crew, and, well, Dawn, of course, but they're just nice guys, and, and the generation doesn't seem to be an issue, you know, mm-hmm. especially now that we're all grown up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, when did the idea of, uh, of doing the Don Calfa documentary come about? Well, it was all Gary Smart and Adam uh, Evans and uh, Chris uh, Griffith. They, those three are the ones that um, brought this up. They were in town, I think, about um, three months ago. They were working on their other documentary. Mm-hmm. And so we met over at the Smokehouse um, Restaurant, which is uh, well-known. That's the same um, name, and for good reason, of... Um, what's the guy's name who just got married? friend of, of uh, Tom Matthews. Uh, got married in Italy. Oh, I know you mean. He actually uh, lived Clooney, in his closet. Clooney, yeah. Josh Clooney. Yeah. His production company is called The Smokehouse. And that's the restaurant we met at over here across from Warner Brothers. And so we met the fellas there, and we talked about a documentary. And they just said, do you want to produce it? And uh, I said, yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. And Don was there as well with his son. And that's how it all came about. It was all them and, and uh, those three gents. Mm-hmm. Those three, I better say, suave gents from England. So, <laughs> is, <laughs> so how important is this to you? It, it's obviously it's very personal to you. So what? Yeah. How how driven are you to make this succeed, and what is it going to mean to you? Well, there's no doubt in my mind that this will happen and it will succeed because Gary is a very driven man, and he's going to make it happen. You know, he did the book, mm-hmm. um, Return of the Living Dead book. And uh, he did a lot for us on uh, More Brains, The Return of the Living Dead. And so there's no doubt in my mind, he's just a go-getter and a doer. So it's going to happen. I know we've got to raise the money for it. And that's, um, you know, one reason why I'm here tonight is just to remind people that, oh, it'd be so nice because these guys have to come from England. Hint, hint, audience. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Annabelle. Um, but um, these guys have to come from England to do this, and you know they do it on on a, a no budget, basically. I mean, airfare and the hotel, and then they've got to really get around and meet all these people and do these interviews. So, you know, eight thousand pounds, which is equivalent to like sixty five hundred dollars, is not mm-hmm. that much to raise. But you know, it's, and it, it will mean so much because Don deserves this. He's always been. You know, this this character actor who is one that supports, you know, the leads, basically. And um, his credits, it's like I was looking at him this afternoon, and you go through IMDb, and it's just, it's incredible. It's, his credits just go on and on. You can't even hardly get to the end of it. You know, the bionic woman, Kojak. Um, I'm looking at it now. It's just crazy mm-hmm. um, what he's done. And he really, we really need to um, talk about that see some of these clips that he's in, and um, learn about him. He's a character. I've, I've been out to his home. He lives out by Palm Springs, and I'm hoping that we'll get footage of that. It is incredible in there. It's just, uh, it's so Don Calpa, you won't even believe it. <laughs> and then the stories that he tells, you know, Gary's like, what, what are we going to come up here with um, for the title of this documentary? Let's work on that first. And so I um, threw out a whole bunch of things to him, and then something went, oh, my gosh, I know the perfect thing. And I said, that's a cut. And the reason for that is that I can't tell you the story because it's going to be in the documentary, but um, it, it, it actually refers to um, he did a movie, uh, Penn, and uh, he was doing a um, kind of a naughty scene, 
and it mm-hmm. refers to female anatomy. And it's in this scene, he and the director have this banter, and it sends the whole crew just rolling in laughter. And when Don tells the story, you just can't even believe how wonderful it is. It's, you know, so um, that's where the title, That's a Cut, comes <laughs> from. So you kind of have to use <laughs> your imagination. Mm. But it's perfect. Thank you. So, and it's just, you know, we've got some, you know, the guys are working so hard on this. So I just, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, and yeah, you sound like a lot of fun. Just an interesting guy, so much history, and really, really fun. Yeah, and and I know you guys have spoken with him. I, I think you have Neil, right, Annabelle, at a convention. Yeah, just briefly he, though, just briefly. Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't stop talking. It's like he'll get a hold of a fan, and you know, line will start to develop, and he he will be talking and telling them stories, especially if they're from his hometown. And they'll go on and on and they'll start gathering around and just listening to, listen to the fabulous stories. He's just, he has so many. It's just incredible. Mm-hmm. So when, <laughs> so you're at, gonna... when you're asking, you know, other people to be involved in this, uh, were they all like generally just like really happy to, to, to want to be, to be part of the documentary? Well, we, we don't quite have too many people involved yet. Mm-hmm. I know we've asked some to do um, a little promo for the documentary for the fundraiser, Mm -hmm. but that's it. So I'm waiting to see who Gary's going to pull up to interview for this documentary. Mm -hmm. I I know it'll be some of the people from Return. I'm sure it's going to be some other people from other movies. And, you know, it's going to be a full-on hardcore documentary, so it should be really great. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, everybody so far has been pretty pretty much, yeah, sure, what do you want us to do, you know? There's only one or two that are like, well, I don't know, what am I going to get for it? (laughs) There's always, uh, you know, wait a minute, it's a documentary, there's no money, you want to help out or not? No, I don't think I do. <laughs> so if that does happen. It's sad, but you know. Mm. You don't have to you name What do you think the proportion is for for discussing the personal life aspects of him in this film as opposed to the professional aspects? And and I'm so sorry, the first part of that question? I was asking obviously it's a whole person and there's personal and professional aspects to a person. How much of it is is the personal behind the scenes? as opposed to his professional career? Oh, you know, that's a good question. I don't know how much of it is going to be. I think it'll be, um, well, I am hoping for a lot of personal things, because like I mm-hmm. you know, said, going to his home and just having him walk through that and talk about it. It's like when uh, Jewel and I started to do a documentary, we went out, we went out there and he cooked us a meal. <laughs> and it was really fun to you know, have him do that. But I would love to see more um, personal things about him than we normally see. But then again, when you look at his credits and you see the different characters that that he's played, it'll be fun to see the um, spectrum of his character. And then, you know, of course, cut back and then interview those people that have been a part of, you know, these different um, parts of the the shows and, and people in his personal life and, you know, things like that. So, you know, his sister, she's a character. It'd be wonderful to have her sit down and talk about things. And, you know, his his um, life growing up, he tells me stories about his, his um, you know, parents and grandparents. And, oh, my goodness, it's just like old times when you sit down and listen to it. It's like, you know, nothing like we have today with, you know, the kids and the problems. It's like, you know, he got grabbed by the ear and knocked upside the head, you know. <laughs> and he talks yeah. about these things that kept him straight. We're here, you know, we... We can't look at our children cross-eyed, and it's it's interesting. So I hope we do have a lot of personal things in there. I'm sure we will, because Don just talks, and you can't help but eat up everything he says. Mm-hmm. Let's let everybody know. Uh, on, you can find out about uh, the, the documentary on facebook.com slash Don Calfa Doc, and there's also the Kickstarter, which will have the link right on the uh, website, and you can find that off uh, the Facebook page as well. And yeah, you've been so sweet about putting, uh, promoting that. Thank you so much, you guys. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for coming on. And, um, oh, guys. Yeah, there was, um, I wanted to bring up, because we actually just uh, met him, uh, Graham Humphreys, the artist who, mm-hmm. uh, who does uh, a lot of the poster work. And he is an exclusive poster. It's one of the uh, the little perks. He well, one of the cool perks you can get if uh, you help uh, donate to the Kickstarter. And uh, he does great work. And uh, how did he get involved in the project? You know, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know how Gary knows him. So um, that's a, <laughs> that's yeah. a really good question. Well, he's from I've England seen too. I've pictures so. of them together. Mm-hmm. So it must have been for the for the um, this last documentary that the Hell is it Hellraiser they're working on the Leviathan. Um, 
Yeah, it mm-hmm. must be for that. I'm not. I'm not sure how they hooked up. And then we've got another fellow who just joined us, um, Craig Ewell. Oh, shoot, I can't remember his last name. But he did some fantastic drawings of um, uh, the, the group of us for the um, a documentary. And then he did some stuff for me, too. And I went, oh, my gosh. And then uh, he and Gary hooked up. So he's going to be joining us and doing some of this stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that so like the, he gonna... does the cartoons? Yeah, the cartoons. Yeah, Craig yes. Thompson, yeah. Oh, those are awesome. They really had a lot of yeah. They really had a lot of uh, like character, I think, to 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 the look of the uh, the Facebook page and the uh, and yeah the, uh, Kickstarter page. You know, and Gary was responsible for the cartoon work in More Brains, mm-hmm. The Return of the Living Dead. So this isn't you know anything new for him either. So I think it's going to be a very interesting, very um, eclectic documentary. <laughs> uh-huh. If I could say that, I think that would be appropriate. Kind of an eclectic. Yeah. Put together. Yeah. Did you, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned, you know. I want to see. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you go on. I was just going to say, I want to see baby pictures of Don Calfa. I'm <laughs> hoping he has <laughs> some great baby pictures to put up. Can you imagine what he looks as, looks like as a baby <laughs> and a child? Uh-huh. I just imagine his head on a baby body. <laughs> Me too, exactly. I can't wait to see that with the big eyes, you know. <laughs> the big eyes looking up at Josh. Mm-hmm. That'd be good. Stuff. I'm sorry, you know. I, I I know. What no, were you gonna say? That, I think that was probably better than anything I was going to say. But uh, <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, uh, you mentioned Gary being in England and uh, some of the people we're working with. Is that how is that like to work with someone so far uh, away? Well, you know, um, it's going to be easy because. <laughs> well, I I just you know we had a little um, snafu the other day or last week I guess it was. And um, so I just called him on the phone, it was, and it was 2 in the morning for him. I felt terrible waking him up, but I just called him, and I said, hey, uh, we got a, we got a thing here. <laughs> and he jumped up, and we, we talked about it. So, um, But we can Skype, and we can uh, email back and forth. And, you know, again, this is mostly these guys doing it. It's mostly Gary and Adam and Chris. And uh, so I'm just pr- most likely going to help out um, over here because, you know, I've got my feet here and, and they're the creative ones over there with um, the computers and the artists and the typing away to write out the, you know, the, what they want. So I'm, uh, I, I'm kind of, I, I, I'm going to say I'm godmothering this project as I did with um, More Brains. Mm-hmm. I just am, you know, going to be here, be here to meet with the people, help with making connections, and it's going to be fine. I'm not worried at all about um, making uh, it this work over the pond. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is this your yeah. uh, first time working with, uh, with like a Kickstarter program? It is, yeah. I've never done that before, so this is interesting to me. I'm, it scares me a bit. I'm watching it. I'm going, oh, you know, how is this going to work? And, <laughs> and Gary's like, don't worry, don't worry. So. Yeah, I've never done that before. Mm-hmm. It's like, what what are some of the yeah. challenges you're facing with your Kickstarter program? I, I, I know you're very confident, but what are some of these things that people can think about? And it is important. We've got people listening out there, and uh, you have yeah. to get the donations to make it work. So what are you, what are you up against? Yeah, I, well, I know, know that they put up some great prizes up or great uh, things. You know, they get to have the documentary, of course. They're paying for it ahead of time, but that's as if they're investors. They get to be producers, and there's all kinds of great things that they go over there. They can see what they can um, what they can buy um, and what they will receive for the money they, that they, you know, donate. It doesn't quite seem like it's a donation because they will be getting something back for it. And they also mm-hmm. have to remember that there's the exchange rate. It's like... They're raising eight thousand dollars, um, eight thousand pounds. I'm sorry, but you know it's equivalent to about sixty five hundred dollars for us. So when they put up a hundred dollars, it's probably more like uh, pounds. I'm sorry, it's more like seventy five dollars in um, in in U S funds. So you just have to go and look and see some of the great things they have. But I think it's fun that they can be a producer along with um, me, and. Um, you know, buy that thing, and they get a bunch of other stuff along with it. You know, they get the download of the documentary, or the uh, and the the you know one you can have in your hand, and the artwork. Like um, Neil was saying, there's so many fun things to have. So, and I know we're going to do some signing of some of the things there as well. So, there's there's some good stuff there. There's some really fun stuff. Yeah, and you know, even just like uh, like the DVD. And uh, it's almost like uh, you're pre-ordering the DVD, but at the same time, you're also helping to actually, you know, make this become a reality. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think too. It's like you're you're buying it ahead of time, and you get to support and help it along. So 
So I think it's a really good deal. I, you know, I, I don't have any problems with how it's being done. If I did, I would have said, hey, I don't know about this. But <laughs> no, he's got it right. I think he's doing a really good job with it. And if there's something that somebody wants, they can always you know, message Gary or myself and say, hey, can we do this? You know, mm-hmm. and um, I'm sure Gary will go, yeah, yeah, I think we can. You know, so whatever it takes to get this money raised so we can get this documentary done. Mm-hmm. So that would be that would be the good thing. It's just it's yeah, got to get done. Yeah, I think that uh, that would add an extra special element to it, knowing that uh, people that you've met at conventions and friends on the internet of are the ones that helped uh, you know make this uh, happen. Yeah, because then they come up and they say, "Hey, I donated." Because I hear that here and there, you know, when we're like for Linnea, I think she had some issues, and people will go, "Hey, I donated. I'm going to see you at the convention," you know, and it's like. So sweet to meet the people that actually cared enough to to help her out, or you know, it, it, yeah. So we'll see them at the conventions. It'll be a lot of fun mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to say to, to say thank you in the, to them, you know, and maybe hand them their merchandise at the same time. I, you know, I don't know, but yeah, yeah it's it's really nice. We'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Now you uh you pro- you were a producer on More Brain, so uh, was that the first uh, the first uh, project that you produced? Yeah, it was. Yeah, and it was so much fun. And it, it um, came very easy for me because my family's in the film business and I see it every day. And then there's Tommy Hudson who had it just rolling right along. He did a great job. He knew what he was doing. He's done it before. And so he just, you know, he was the one in the lead and, and, and took over and did everything. So it was really great. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, first one, hopefully not the last one, Um mm-hmm. uh, you know, this one about Don Calfa, and we'll see what comes up later on. And, you know, I just did the movie with Felissa and Eric Roberts, which okay. is really exciting. Mm-hmm. That, that should be coming out pretty soon. No solicitors. Mm-hmm. And uh, then who uh, John Calfa directed. And then we've got um, The Survivors coming, which William Butler put us all together. Um, we should be filming next year, which is really exciting. So there's a lot of stuff that, that's going on. And then Felissa contacted me today about doing a... Um, a part in the movie. So, hmm. is that was that fun for you to get back into acting? I'm sorry. Is it was it fun to you to get back into acting? Oh my gosh, yeah, it's really fun. I didn't expect it to happen. So, because I don't have an agent, and I just you know people are calling, so it's really nice. <laughs> it's really fun, and I, I really should get an agent at some point here. <laughs> and. Um, but it's hard because my home life is so busy and my husband you know, travels a lot for his... Um, he's in the film business and he travels a lot. And now my son's in the film business and he's, you know, off with my husband. So it's hard to um, uh, go on interviews every day because I've got two puppies here at the house. And I keep swearing I'm going to get an agent and get going again, but I haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's any agents out there listening, they, they can contact you, I guess. Yeah, they can... <laughs> They can contact me, but like, but I'm excited about the um, the survivors and no solicitors. I've got that going, and and uh, that's pretty darn good for now. I'm really happy with that. Mm-hmm. Now, did you meet Felissa through the conventions? Yeah, you know, I did. Um, I think the first one was in Kentucky, and um, she was just we were across from each other, and she was with John. Um, is it Kirsten, I think it is? He's yes. a crack up, and I've yeah. got my John mm-hmm. from our movie, and it's just the funniest thing. But yeah, I've been, I traveled with her at one convention, and we um, did the airplane and the airports together. I just, I love her to pieces. It's, you know, Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that poor man. He was just, you know, he just wants to be left alone at the airport. And here comes Felissa and I. It's like, hi, Ernie. You know, and he comes down to dinner, just wants to go sit in the corner by himself. Ernie, come sit with us. <laughs> and I'm this poor man. And, um, but then, you know, then there was this woman who fell over in the airport and Felissa's was like, oh no, oh no, we've got to go back and help her. And I go, we're going to miss our plane. And so, but other people went to rush her, but, but that's, uh, Felissa, you know, she's just like, oh no, I gotta go, we gotta go help this person. And, but just great flying with her and traveling with her is just, you know, a breeze. So yeah, we met at conventions. We've done a few together and I wish to heck we could get some more together out of town because we could both use a good girl night out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard to do it at home, you know, cause she has kids and I have the, my one son and the puppies and it's just hard to, do a girl's night. I asked you to go to the um, premiere of Horrible Bosses. Um, is it two or three? I don't know. Number My two. husband worked on it. Yeah. Two. And so he can't make it to the... Is it two? Mm-hmm. Two, yeah. yeah. 
And um, he can't make it to the premiere because he's working on another film. And so he had the, the tickets transferred to my name. And he goes, well, why don't you see if Felicia can go with you? I'm like, oh, yay, that's perfect. Because, you know, that's girl trouble. And yay. And um, <laughs> But she couldn't because she's going to Days of the Dead. Aww. So I was so Aww. bummed about it. But um, I still think I'm going to go. It'll be fun. But not with Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's too bad. But I, I'm sure you'll I know. It. I know. I'll find a date. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, find, I think, I'll find somebody who wants to go. So, because the party afterwards is even more fun than the actually seeing the movie. It's at the Chinese Theater in Hollywood. It's going to be a big mm. thing. And I've it's never been fun. There. It's so much fun. Mm-hmm. How is it juggling all of these different aspects in your life? A lot of these things, most of us have no experience with whatsoever. So, how is it for you going through all these different things at once? It's a lot. That. That's so sweet of you. Thank you, Annabelle. Um, it, it's um, a little stressful because one minute I'm a, um, I'm a mom and then I'm the wife and then I'm, I've got these two crazy Yorkie puppies telling me what to do and <laughs> then I, um, I go off to do a convention and it, it's, it's coordinating all these things. It's really hard and to step away to go do a movie is very stressful because I'm worried about what's going on at the house because that's pretty much my responsibility because my husband you know, works so much. And um, so, yeah, it's really stressful. Thank you for asking, but um, I wouldn't change it. Well, that's not true. I would change it. But, <laughs> but um, it's, yeah, I keep switching my hats over. When I come back from a convention and I'm, I'm floating on cloud nine, my mom's like, hey, take out your trash. <laughs> we didn't do that while you were gone. <laughs> like, okay, mom, okay. <laughs> yeah, we've heard from a few people about the reality Hitting you when you come back from the convention that, oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go outside and pick up after the puppies, you know, and <laughs> clean the, do the laundry. And, oh, gosh, yeah, it's just back to a normal life like everybody else. Mm-hmm. So, But then you've got Facebook and all the fans and all the fun there, too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, you know, you see that every day. But, yeah, it's a funny thing. It's, you know, reality check all day long. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. oh, but wait a second. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah, interesting. That's interesting that you noticed that or you picked up on that because it is a mm-hmm. weird thing. Mm-hmm. Now, um, last time we had you on, you talked about um, the original cast members getting together and thinking about doing a sequel to Return of the Living Dead, like a direct sequel with everybody. And uh, right. is that still like talked about at all, or did that change after uh, Dan passed away? Well, no, it actually really had nothing to do with um, Dan. We had um, a writer write a script. I know there's a lot of different scripts out there by a lot mm-hmm. of different people, but um, my husband hired somebody to, to write a script, and then he started to um, work on the rights of the movie, who owned you know, the actual rights to it, and so he talked to the agents, or the, I'm sorry, the, the attorneys at MGM, and talked to some agencies, that, and it turns out that um, Return of the Living Dead is owned by so many people, bits and pieces, that it's an absolute mess. Well, MGM first said that they would never do a remake of Return of the Living Dead, just not going to happen, so that everyone can put that one to rest. And then to do a sequel, um, we started talking to a few people that did own the rights, and they just got crazy about their numbers. And if you, you talk to the first person, they want $2 million, and you talk to the next person, by the time you pay off everybody, there's no money to make the, the movie. And so it just became a, an, a complete mess, and it became ridiculous, and there were threats, and you can't do that. I own this piece of it. And then you look it up, and you know somebody else owns a complete piece of what this person's claiming that they own. So it was an, it was a nightmare. Actually, I spoke with um, William Butler on Facebook messaging before we you know, became um, friends. I still have not, well, yeah, I did meet him for the interview, but we still have not done anything together. But he's the one who was telling me a lot about the right that he, you know, I, I finally asked him, what do you know about this? Because we've got the attorney's opinions, we've got agent's opinions, and uh, he came around and told me some of the stuff that he knew. So it's, it's, it's not going to happen. It's going to have to be so cleverly mastered that nobody can come back and sue us because there's no way to pay off all these people. Mm-hmm. There's just no way. <sighs> as the bad as that is. Night of the Living Dead, where anybody can do anything with Night of the Living Dead, you are just gridlocked in all of this. But exactly, yeah, gridlocked. Right that's that's mm-hmm. perfect, Annabelle. Complete, complete gridlock on this. So I'm, I'm so sad about it, too, because we've already invested some money in it, which is fine because that's what we wanted to do, but 
it's sad that it can't go any further. It's just, you know, I kept saying, well, what about this? Well, what about this? And finally, I was like, Beverly, <laughs> there's, mm-hmm. a, there's a time here where you're just going to have to stop. It's not going to happen. And <laughs> I still haven't quite gotten that through my head yet. I still keep thinking, well, can't think we could do this. You but never know. Yeah, keep for me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You could be and some I'm call you. that comes out from the, the West. And just slaps <laughs> down all kinds of money and resources. You don't know. Uh, listen, to you, I'm going to call you every night. <laughs> and you're going to give me that fabulous pep talk. It's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you took me up ten feet. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Uh-huh. That's great. My idea was if you if it did happen and you were a zombie in the movie because you're very uh, you're very polite that you would you would eat uh, the brains with a fork and knife. <laughs> I love You're that so idea. funny. I like that. Oh, that's hysterical. You know, um, Brian Peck and I uh, did this movie together. It'll be out next year. I forgot about this one. Um, that's how how uh, crazy my life is. I forgot that we did this movie. It was um, it's called The Kitchen Sink, and we did these mm-hmm. cameo roles where we pay, played May Whitman's um, parents as zombies, and we and Tony Gardner was the makeup guy. And who did Return of the Living Dead? And he did well. His crew did our makeup room in the chair for a couple hours each. And oh my gosh, I cannot. I you know we're not allowed to put the pictures up on Facebook until the movie has come out or even at all. But oh my gosh, it was just incredible to be to look like a zombie. It was so much fun. And so I said to the guy in the makeup when I was in the makeup chair, I said, "Do you think I could have high cheekbones like Annabelle? Do you think I could have high cheekbones and cleavage?" And he goes, oh, sure, we can, give you, we can give you that as a zombie. I'm like, wow. And so they did. They gave me all these fantastic veins where I look like I have cleavage and high cheekbones. <laughs> it's fabulous. I can so go I, for the I cleavage know. part as well. We'll meet, we'll meet in between. I've got the high cheekbones and then cleavage. Yeah, you do. With that. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, I was very impressed with myself. <laughs> <laughs> but Brian looked great. He had the big uh, cut in his neck, the big bite wound in his neck, and I can't wait to see how much we get in it. If we, how much you know, we're there, but we're at the, the dinner table with uh, Mae Whitman, and um, hopefully, we're it's a good scene. I'm hoping, but it'll be fun. Now I know, though, I know what it feels like to be a zombie. <laughs> it sounds very exciting. Yeah, right. I guess this movie's going to have vampires and. Uh, mm-hmm. zombies, of course, and all kinds. Of, I don't know if they have werewolves or what, but they've got all kinds of um, creatures in the movie. Mm-hmm. So well, hopefully they'll, they'll start talking about it soon. You can see it on IMDb, who's in it. And um, you know the guy from... Um, oh, here we go again. I'm going to make you guys guess. Uh, uh, Breaking Bad, the attorney. Uh, is it Sid? No. No, uh, I know. Saul. Better call Saul. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Saul Saul, he's in that Saul movie. Goodwill. He's in the kitchen sink and a bunch of other people. But mm-hmm. Yeah. I never saw him. We, he wasn't there when we were there. Odenkirk. But, uh, oh, Bob Odenkirk. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So I, can't, I don't know what he played. I have no idea. But it'll be interesting to see. So it's quite a, a list of characters in that movie, too. Yeah, I'm really interested And, to and see then that. Brian Peck and I. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is Brian Peck as fun uh, to be around as he seems? Uh, yes. <laughs> he has the best parties, the Halloween parties, the birthday parties. He, um, his house, I, you know, I have to, I, I go on, on and on about his house all the time, but if you go into his garage, which um, I always joke about it and say that you have to use a retinal scan to get in because it's, it's that hardcore. Um, he has all of the Planet of the Eight stuff in there. Yeah. The, the sarcophagus, the um, actual um, the wardrobe, everything, makeup, everything is in there. And then in his home, he has the, the most incredible house. His his room looks like um, the Hawaii uh, the Disneyland Tiki room. <laughs> it's all the blow. It's <laughs> I'm not, uh, kind of. There's all the fish hanging from the ceiling. It's like a tiki room. I'll just say that. It's like a, a tiki bedroom. There's no TV in there. Mm. And um, it's just an incredible room to go in. There's so much stuff in there to look at. It's just so much fun. And then you go into his living room. He has a lot of the um, Disney posters in there, the ride attraction posters. And then um, you go into his living room, and that's more Western style. And then you go into his dining room, and he has, like, the lamps from, do you know the, the famous restaurant, Chadney's? It closed down. It was in Beverly Hills. It closed down a while ago. But he and his father went in there and collected the lights, and he's got uh, one or two of the lights hanging in his in his uh, dining room. And he's got a, we have a big boy restaurant. Do you know what big boy 
Bob oh, Chick Boy yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's got one of those big statues of Bob <laughs> Chick Boy <laughs> in his kitchen. I mean, he just... You, you just look at his house walking around going, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, he's a lot of fun. His parties are fun, and uh, his friends are fun. Yeah, it's it's great. It's Yeah, he's a lot of fun. Yeah, I know he's actually brought some of his uh, Planet of the Apes stuff to different conventions to put for a display. Oh, wow, okay. I think, you know, too, you know, the Academy Awards, the Academy, um, they're opening up a museum and I think they're going to take some of his stuff, or he's going to donate it um, wow. to live at the museum. So, which um, my husband had taken over a decorator who um, works for him a lot, Jan uh, Pascal. She's an incredible director. I mean, a, a set designer, and I think um, Academy Award-winning um, set designer. And she's putting, helping to one of the people putting together this museum. And so Clay goes, "You got to see my husband's Clay. She's got to see Brian Peck's." room and all the stuff he has, because they were going to rent some of it for Horrible Bosses, which they didn't end up renting it for it, but um, she says, oh my gosh, she says, we're putting together the museum, would you be interested? And he, he said, yeah, you know, give me a call. So it, I hope it gets into the museum, that'd be a lot of fun for everyone to go there and see it, yeah. and it's all all ready to go. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Now, how is... Uh, um when you guys came went to Don about uh, doing the the uh, documentary itself, what what was his thoughts on it? Well, when I was sitting at the dining room table, he goes, "Yeah, hey, yeah, sure, why not?" <laughs> <laughs> so he um he didn't um say too much. He was he's just funny, you know. He was funny about it. Like he sounds good to me. Hey, you know, <laughs> and um. Yeah, he's. I think he's excited about it deep down, and I'm sure he hopes very much that this all happens. And you know, he he will. I imagine that tears will flow. Oh, I'm gonna start crying. Tears will flow when it's finished and he sees it. I mm-hmm. think that yeah. it's really gonna mean a lot to him. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's a he's a very sensitive guy, and uh, you know, I, I know he's he hasn't been overlooked in his life because he's. He has done such incredible things, and he's always been hired for the job, but um, he's always been that character actor, and for him to be center stage for the entire um, documentary and everything to be all about him, I just, oh my goodness, I just don't know what, at the end of the screening, the first time he sees it, I just don't know what is going to happen. It's, it's, it'll be something to see. Yeah. It'll be really exciting. Mm-hmm. And now for... He, he I was say for uh, for that to happen, people have to uh, go over the Facebook page or go over the Kickstarter page and uh, help uh, help make this a reality. Yep, and and I'll turn my camera on and and get that first reaction of him seeing the whole thing done. And I, I uh, just so you can picture that it's it's well worth every penny anyone puts forward. Mm-hmm. So and just to keep in mind, there's no profit on this. It's all going to be about the documentary. So mm-hmm. it's you know everything that's being put towards it's going to go for all of the the um, things that people are purchasing. They have to be for the T-shirts and the art and the trip out here for the fellas and the you know cutting everything together, the equipment rental, the van rental, all those kinds of things that add up so fast. And I know Gary and Adam and Chris are putting some of their own money in this as well. So um, it's going to be well worth it. Mm-hmm. Well, we want to wish you luck on that. And, oh, uh, definitely. Thank you. You guys. Thank you. You guys are great. Thanks for the interview. That was just so fun. Well, thank you. I'll call you. I'll call you tomorrow, same time, Kay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Pardon. I'm happy I can be your cheerleader, and, and you can be mine. Anytime you just, as soon as you see me, you talk with me, and you do some yays, and I'll I'll do the same for you. Okay. It's like the first time I saw you. I know. I'm, my time's up. I know that. But wait. One more thing. It's like the first time I saw Annabelle at the convention, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I couldn't stop staring at her because she's just the most beautiful girl. I'm going to embarrass you, and I'm sorry. But she's just (laughs) the most beautiful girl. I just, I think I was making her uncomfortable. I just kept looking at her like, oh, my gosh. (laughs) I don't know what what your family ancestry is, but it's like, I don't know where you got those bones on your face. My Lord, they're perfect. Well, well, thank you very much. That's an amazing compliment. I really appreciate that. (laughs) You're welcome. I just I see you on these magazine covers. It's just oh my gosh! I'll stop. I'll well, stop because now I'll go look at the pic- 
<laughs> Tom, I, right? You know anyone send them my way. <laughs> I think how they should. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, all right, I'm going to stop, but yeah, Annabelle, gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Neil, you're cute, too. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. You don't have to lie, though. I mean, it's just fine. Clay? <laughs> no, I think I nothing. No. What? I said you don't have to lie on the show. It's it's fine. I'm not. You're adorable. No lying. It was a pleasure to have you here. So it's always great. It's always a lot of fun to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. And I, I, do remember so at a, I do remember at a convention when uh, we were trying to smuggle in, like, uh, it was really like pineapple juice and ginger ale, and I said, "They're throwing me out because I have ginger ale." And I remember Beverly saying, "I love ginger ale. It's a really good drink." <laughs> was that? Were we in Atlanta? <laughs> yes, it was Atlanta. Yeah. Oh no, Atlanta was a big. Yeah, that was the naughty place for all of us. We, <laughs> uh-huh. we misbehaved in Atlanta. Yes, we had the ginger oh, ale. We were. <laughs> Yeah. What? Yes, misbehaved with ginger ale. <laughs> <That'll> <laughs> well, do. we went to dinner before that. The whole cast of us, the whole cast of Return, and um, we um, we drank too much. We were at um, <laughs> a, a Polynesian restaurant there, and we we got out of control. We I made the most almost. intense drinks. Mai Tai, the Mai Tai, ah, right? Yeah. I'm a big fan of the Mai Tai. Had, mm-hmm. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had two of them. I could not, when we decided to walk back to the hotel because we were all so hot. And <laughs> <laughs> My husband's like, Beverly, it's the first convention we went to because he was there working on a film, and so we were able to see each other there. And he goes, Beverly, you were high fine homeless people. I'm like, no, I wasn't. And he says, yeah, he was trying to get money from you, and you were high-fiving us. <laughs> That's classic. That's beautiful. Oh, I'm so, I was so embarrassed, and I paid for it. It's like Lawrence the next day. He, I walk on mm-hmm. into the um, uh, convention with my head down on my, I go, oh, my gosh, the walk of shame. <laughs> terrible. Anyway, I know you're trying to hang up on me, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no. I'll just keep talking. But, and <laughs> please, know. absolutely, uh, let us know how it's going. Keep us posted and feel free to, to swing by and and update us on your Kickstarter and all these the various things that you're up to. Oh, thanks so much, you guys. Thank you. Absolutely. You're very welcome. And, Thank you for coming uh, on. I'll see you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we'll see you very I, soon. I'm sure we're running to each other. What conventions do you have up and coming? Uh, I think Mikey has us doing a Motor City uh, Nightmares in, mm-hmm. I think it's in April, but that's all we have. Next year is our 30th anniversary, so I was hoping we'd have a big wow. lineup, wow. so we'll see mm-hmm. what happens. You, you, they'll start booking us, I imagine, pretty soon, yeah, and we'll know more so. later. That's a big one. But, yeah. I know, right? Yeah. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. So, all right, you dear people, thank you kindly. So well, thank you very much for being here. Mm-hmm. My yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And all the best with the Kickstarter, and we'll look forward to seeing it. Okay, super. Yeah, I'll give you guys big hugs next time. Yay. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. Have a good night. Good night. Maybe, maybe, we'll get, maybe we'll get a high five. <laughs> <laughs> a drunk high, Mai Tai high five. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, my I, gosh. Oh. Mai Tai high five. <laughs> So embarrassing. It was so embarrassing. Anyway. <laughs> Those are the best memories where you're embarrassed. <laughs> right? If that's the truth. Yep. Yep. Because you know what? When I walked into the, to the convention and I had my head down and I'm like, oh my gosh, the walk of shame. And Tom Matthews and Brian and John all stand up and start clapping for me. Because they were proud of me. <laughs> I, I, I was that bad. I was bad. I was really bad. But... <laughs> Oh boy! Standing Sounds like people are going to start buying you a lot more mai tais. <laughs> and people try to. They try and buy me drinks. I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I there, can't. There's actually a restaurant here. They have they call they have the mai tais, and they had they have what they call guy ties because it, it's double the alcohol. So you're mainly oh, man ties. I think they're called. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's crazy because those mai tais already are so strong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those are potent drinks. What's that restaurant called? Do you know what it's? Uh-huh. There's one in Beverly Hills, and there's one in Atlanta at the Hilton, and it's called. Uh, Not a PF uh, Chang's or something, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um Hawaiian Hawaiian uh, oh. Mai Tai. That's okay. I'll put it on Facebook. <laughs> I'll bring out my pictures of shame. <laughs> Excellent. We'll all look forward to that. <laughs> 
Okay. I'll talk to you. I'm hanging up now, I promise. I'll talk to you later. Mm-hmm. So talk to you very soon. Bye. <laughs> Have a nice night. Bye. Bye. This is Brian Peck, Scuzz from Return of the Living Dead, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com.